All right, everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do what I know is your favorite thing from Excel, and that is nonlinear regression. But I'm going to show you how to do it in MATLAB. Um, and we'll use the, and I'm going to show it from some note slides just so you can see how this works, because I think this is a, a very good explanation and demonstration of FMIN search uh, and some of the more advanced features that you can use. But it requires a little bit of thinking on this part. So we're going to break this down into two main sections. First, um, if we want to do nonlinear regression, we have to create a function that's going to find sum of squared errors. So we're going to actually combine both a function that is, is going to calculate our equation that we're trying to uh, that we're trying to find the solution for uh, to model, as well as minimizing the sum of squared errors, and then uh, and then using the fmin search function. So in step one. Let's consider a function like this one. We'll go back to the nonlinear regression. We'll use this example that we had from um, uh, from Excel. And I, uh, I know we didn't do this one explicitly in Excel, but again, this is one example uh, where you ha can have this expression of PM, um, where P, in this case a parameter, is going to equal to um, I over I sat times exponential of negative I over I sat plus one. So this is the expression that we're going to use. Um, and we want to find the uh, and we have a set of data here where i is our input value, our independent variable, or independent variable, and p is our dependent variable. So we're going to create a function now that is going to have to that is going to output sum of squared errors. That's what the function is going to do. But in order to do so, it's going to have to take as an input both our uh, i values as a vector, our p values as a vector. Um, and also the object that we're going to try to be optimizing in this case are coefficients and so in this case our coefficients are going to be um, our uh, pm and isat are these two values pm and isat are our coefficients that we're going to try to find to optimize and uh, so find least squares of so to do this we're going to set up a function like this and i'll, I'll work it through with one step at a time so you can see how this plays out and how this is going to look. So, all right, um, I'm back. I had a nice little crash of, of some programs, but uh, we're back to where I wanted to be. Uh, this has been a fun day with these things. But anyways, uh, so the first thing we're going to do is create a function that is going to try to calculate, or not try to, it's going to succeed at calculating the sum of squared errors for our function in question. So I'm going to create a function and it's going to output um, let's just call the output, um, uh, I don't know, output, so clever of me, is equal to uh, sum of squared errors. So I'll just say FSSE for the sum of squared errors. And in the inputs, we're going to put our coefficients. And the coefficients, I'll, I'll call this as coefficients, coef, and all our i's, remember i was our uh, uh, independent variables in this equation, and our um, uh, p values that are our um, raw data. So I'm just call this uh, p raw values or p data. Okay, so we have those. Now, in this function that we're going to create, uh, the nice thing about MATLAB, remember, is we can do every single value uh, for every i uh, simultaneously because through the array vector. So we can create a vector of of new p's of what the actual equation is um, using the following formula. So we can say the coefficient, first coefficient that we're going to use uh, dot times i dot divided by coefficient of 2. So that other coefficient uh, in this uh, equation and uh, dot times the exponential of, and in this case it's going to be uh, negative i uh, dot divided by coefficient of 2 plus 1. So that is the equation that we have for uh, uh, this uh, for this function that we're trying to optimize, and you can go back to the um, to the raw data equation that we had here. I'll bring it over here. 
you can say it's coefficient 1 times i divided by coefficient 2 times the exponential of negative i divided by the coefficient 2 plus 1. So that's what we have here. Excellent. So now, now we have that first line. The second line is going to be our sum of squared errors uh, determining. So this is where Excel or MATLAB really shines, is we can take all of that funny code that we had to do in Excel, all those lines, sum them up, square that, or take the difference, square it, sum them, and so forth. And that all becomes one very simple line. So the output, our sum of squared errors, is going to equal to, well, we have our difference of our raw data, so P data, minus um, P, our model result. Oops. We're going to take this difference, and then we're going to square it, but we want the sum of all those. So we can just say the sum. So here we have p data minus p, the vector of p data minus p, the vector, squared each uh, of those values, diff uh, differences, took the sum of all that, and I think that, let's see, did I do this? Okay, we don't need this one. And that's it. And so we have the output, and and that is our function. That is what we'll create. And so we'll save, save this. FSSE, we'll save it. And on the desktop, and there we go. So um, for this input, we'll have to take a vector i, and we'll say i is equal to, and I'm going to pull it from the data set that we had. So it's 50, 80, 130, 200, 250, 350, 450, 550, 700. This is a very compelling video, huh? All right, and then we're going to have for our our p data. Now we don't actually have to call it p data, but we'll just call it um, p data. <laughs> it could be whatever we want to call it, but I'm just being consistent now. It's equal to 99, 177, uh, 202, 248, uh, 229, 219, 173, 142, and 72. There you go. Now, um, it's just so you can see what I'm getting this information from. We're getting it all over here. Here's a P, here's the I, and you'll see here as part of this problem, we instate we need initial guesses of um, for P naught as 10 for the unknown parameters. So both will be 10. So in this case, I will call our coefficients, I'll just give it an A, is equal to 10 and 10. So we have uh, our inputs for this function. So we can actually, for this set right now, we can see what the SSE is by equaling it FSSE, our function of SSE, of A, I, and P data. And we get a value of, of 2.9891 times 10 to the fifth. Um, obviously that's uh, really large, so that isn't optimized yet. So now we just have to figure out a way to find the minimum value for this. Now to do this, remember we used fmin search. Now here's where there's going to be a trick, and one of the reasons why this video is very important, and so now is the very important part. Um, we're going to use fmin search. You already learned how to do that. The fmin search, and I'm going to do this in the code so I can not worry about any enter. fmin search is, uh, and I'm not going to do it here because I don't want you to can think that I can put it in the function file because I can't. Um, so we'll put a new one. But fmin search um, is going to be our uh, value for solving this. Now, in order to do this effectively, we have to be able to input not just um, the, uh, uh, the fmin search will have a function, in this case fsse, at, and we'll have our initial conditions, which is A, and that's how we did it before, right? So if I just took these two and did this, you'll see right away it gets mad at us. Why? 
because of this line here, not enough input arguments. We have in our SSE equation three inputs. Here, it's only going to know to put A in, but it doesn't know what to give I and P data. In order to do that, in, um, uh, in the FMIN search feature, we have to do it after the um, coefficients enter. So if, if I look at help, what I mean by that. So if I go to help, fmin search, and you'll see here, it's going to say fun, uh, functions options um, and the options value. Uh, we can pass through after this options section, any data that we put in after this comma is going to get sent to this function. So as, as variables. So if I said, see, see, if I said f min search, comma, and instead of options putting in, just put open bracket, close bracket. This tells MATLAB I'm not using the options at all. I'm just going to leave it be default formatting for everything. And now put another comma and then enter in the order of data of the remaining vec variables for the FSSE function. So here I would pass through I, comma, P data, hit enter, and now we will get values for our coefficients, where the answer is um, 238 and 221 uh, for uh, this function. And that's how we can actually use uh, this value to find uh, the uh, equation. So I'm going to verify this. So let's see if we can verify this. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go to editor and go to our function. And this here is our function. So I'm going to copy this and then we're going to say um, uh, fun is this thingy and in this case I'm going to say at of um, I and the coefficient one is actually going to be answer one answer two because those are the answers on our output answer two and that should give us our function with the optimum uh, optimized coefficients. And so now, if I was to plot this function, let's see what this looks like, f of function, and our x value is going from where to where. Let's look at our, our x. Is, uh, I, is, I is going from 50 to 700. So why don't we plot f plot of fun from 0 to 700. And we get that as our plot. Does that make sense? Um, sure, why not? And then if we plotted our data on top of that, I'll say hold. And I will say plot. Um, what's our plot? It's i, comma, p, data, comma, and let's do it in 0b. And let's see what that looks like. There you go. And that's the FMIN search fitting of the data set, the raw data that we had. So obviously it's not a perfect fit, but you see exactly how this kind of fits together and how we we're able to do the exact same thing we could do in Excel in MATLAB with finding the minimum uh, function. It was really just came down to this line of code and turning uh, the uh, table data or uh, the the sum of squared errors data into effectively what is amounts to two lines of a uh, function code. So in some cases, I think you can really see why you can combine so much very simply uh, in MATLAB uh, for this. So at the end of that, that's uh, I think a good overview of how to use FMIN search optimization to find nonlinear regression of uh, uh, equations in MATLAB. So thanks.